Shalom, who praises to Yahweh, Barsham, Yahweh, Barsham, Amakak, Kudash, double honors unto the apostles and elders, a great millstone who rule well. And Shalom to the whole four elect. This is by Allah. Title of this video will be determined upon upload. I've got a couple precepts I want to go through and basically show, Lord willing, edify uh, the Akim, the elect of the Heavenly Father, Yahweh, Barsham, Yahweh, Barsham, Amakak, Kudash. Also, Israel, Yasha Allah, he, he, uh, Prince of the Most High, all right. Um, <clears throat> just in showing that really this calling, um, that we have, which we work in hopes of being, uh, um, chosen, is that, uh, to magnify that of the Heavenly Father. All right, we understand, you know, we, we receive this calling via a gift, uh, by grace, all right, of faith, whereby we're able to believe, all right, and there's various processes that befall upon us to determine whether we are of the chosen until the day that the Lord makes his arrival. That's why um, in the book of Sirach, it speaks about Wisdom being like um, a heavy burden, all right? It's not really a burden, but it, it, when it starts with you, it's going to try you to see whether, you know, you're worthy of it, all right? And only, you know, you go into Matthew, the 13th chapter, when you deal with the parable, I believe it's Matthew 13. I haven't read it in a while. But the parable of the... Um, the seed, you know, the the, the 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 seed that alludes to many different people that receive the faith and different things basically become obstacles and obstruct them, uh, stop them from endeavouring and, the, the, you know, fulfilling that, that this calling, all right? But all in all, the point, the reason why I'm saying all of this is really what we're dealing with is that of... Um, you know, this is to magnify the Heavenly Father. We're nobodies, man. All right. And even more so, maybe we would have had some kind of skill or talent, ability. But in reality, before the Heavenly Father, we are nobodies. All right. Why? Because we're men in the flesh. All right. Even when you read on from this, this scripture I'm going to open with, it actually you know, it says, what is man that you're mindful of him? Because man is nothing all right we're just we're insects to the heavenly father you know it reminds me of one nas lyric under on, on god i'm tiny all right the heavenly father the amount of people that's upon this earth walking at this moment for you to even believe you're anything some kind of weight for the heavenly father is is truly vain all right but all in all we, you know, it serves as an example because there are people within the flesh that have a great position in, upon the earth. But we being of lowly, um, of a lowly um, worth in the eyes of the world, the things that we're going to do in the Heavenly Father are going to really magnify his name and his power to show you that he is great. All right, so I'm going to go for a few precepts and Lord willing, uh, you'll be edified. So this is Psalms 8 and 1, 1 and 2. The chief To the chief musician upon Gittith, a psalm of David, O Lord Yahweh, our, our Lord, how excellent is thy name in all the earth, who has set thy glory above the heavens. Right. So the heavenly father, Yahweh, all right, which is his true name, his name is excellent, but at this point in time, it's not excellent upon the earth. It's not being presented, but it stands to show that there's something, something very wrong with the earth, all right? That the Heavenly Father made this place and that his name is not being promoted or known amongst the people upon the earth, but he's going to get his glory, all right? Who has set the glory above, who has set that glory above the heavens, right? All right, and and that's gonna be known. All right, as the Lord's prayer says, "Our our our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth 
as in heaven. Verse 2, out of the mouth of babes and sucklings has thou ordained strength because of thine enemies. All right, so out of the mouth of babes and sucklings, we're talking about babies, you know, a baby is weak, all right? Anyone can have their way with it, right? You have these pedophiles that basically have their way with children, do obscene things to them. Why? Because they, those children don't have a means of defence. For example, you could have a baby boy that's like two months old. I'm not so you know, there'll be a couple pounds and maybe like no more than a foot long or something like that. But they could grow up to be like six foot six, you know, pure muscle and everything. But within that moment of being a, a little child, anyone can have their way with them, all right? They could be slewed you know, anything, all right? But the Heavenly Father has designated babes and sucklings, you know, as an allegory alluding to us in his faith, all right? Strength, all right? Because of thine enemies, that thou might as still the enemy and the avenger. So we're going to be used as a, as a mouthpiece and an example, a show of the Heavenly Father's strength to actually obstruct to, to stop, you know, quell the enemy and the avenger against the Heavenly Father ultimately. All right? So that, that stands, to, that means a lot because really think about it again. The book of 1 Corinthians, it, it speaks about, um, you know, the head of a house, the head of, uh, the head of it, everything is the Heavenly Father followed by Yahweh Shai, then the man, then the woman. Right, and a woman has has honor over the children. Okay, now you're taking essentially what the heavenly father's done is taking children and set them above men of this world and not any kind of <laughs> any old ordinary men, men with great power. All right, Jeremiah serves as an example of that when he was brought to be uh to, to go before Israel and condemn them being a prophet. And the Lord, he, he was, he said, look, man, I'm just a child. But the Lord said, look, man, the God thy loins, I'm going to send you before them. And it was going to be a great power before them. They can't, they can't, it would be like a, a castle with a fort before them, a brass and, with brass and walls. I forget how it was worded verbatim, but you can read it in Jeremiah, the first chapter. All right. But only, you know, the Heavenly Father you know, use the, the weak things of this world to confound the wise, all right? So I want to jump into this example, which shows great, um, which is a great example, which really should call to mind, it should be something you arm yourself with in these days that we're in, all right? Because only we're going to be like unto this same individual, King David, in the times we're heading into. So this is First Samuel 16 and 1. And the Lord Jehovah said unto Samuel, How long wilt thou mourn for Saul, seeing I have rejected him from reigning over Israel? Fill thine horn with oil and go, I will send thee to Jesse, the Beth Bethlehemite. For I provided me a king among his sons. And Samuel said, How can I go if Saul hear it? He will kill me. And the Lord Jehovah said, Take a heifer, take an heifer with thee and say, I am come to sacrifice to the Lord Jehovah and call Jesse to the sacrifice and I will show thee what thou shalt do. And thou shalt anoint unto me him whom I name unto thee. And Samuel did that which the Lord Jehovah spake and came to Bethlehem by Yafla come being a house of bread. And the elders of the town trembled at his coming and said, Comest thou peaceably? And he said, Peaceably, I am come to sacrifice unto the Lord Jehovah. Sanctify yourselves and come with me to the sacrifice. And he sanctified Jesse and his sons and called them to the sacrifice. And it came to pass when they were come that he looked on Eliab and said, Surely the Lord Jehovah's anointed is before him. But the Lord Jehovah said unto Samuel, Look not on his countenance or on the height of his stature, because I have refused him. All right? For the Lord Jehovah seeth not as man seeth. 
For man looketh on the outward appearance, but the Lord Yahweh looketh on the heart. Now, mind you, Saul, who had been removed from favor, right by the heavenly father, before the heavenly father, was of great stature, great ability, all right. But guess what? The heavenly father stopped dealing with him, and even more so, as we know the story goes, the man who was an, who was an, ultimately anointed to be in King David. Um, was able to to defeat a, a full grown man, a champion amongst the the, Thessal the Thessalonians, the the um, Philistines, all right. Which the Philistines, as as an average, all right, a men of great stature, all right. On average, are men of great of great stature, all right. So it shows you a lot in that the heavenly Father, will you know he can make he he the heavenly Father deals in a different type of to a different um, standard, all right? Verse eight, then Jesse called uh, Abinadab and made him pass before Samuel. And he said, neither have the Lord Yahweh chosen this. Then Jesse made Shammah to pass by and he said, neither have the Lord Yahweh chosen this. Again, Jesse made seven of his sons to pass before Samuel. And Samuel said unto Jesse, The Lord Yahweh have not chosen these. And Samuel said unto Jesse, Are there are here all thy children? And he said, There remaineth yet the youngest, and behold, he keepeth the sheep. He keepeth the sheep. And Samuel said unto Jesse, Send them fetch him, for we will not sit down till he come tither, hither. And he sent and brought him in. Now he was ruddy. All right, the word there for ruddy basically means youthful, all right, pu pubescent, all right, it was in his puberty, okay, so he's a very young man, it doesn't mean light skin, all right, it means, you know, youthful, and, he, and he, he's, he's um, you know, coming into age, basically, and wherewithal of a beautiful countenance and goodly to look, look to, and the Lord Jehovah said, arise, anoint him, for this is he. All right, and that shows you a lot that this man was a very extremely young man, you know, just coming coming of age, so to speak, where he's you know just just you know, as term in terms of age he became a man, but in terms of strength as a man he wasn't in his full strength, all right. But he was the one that was being called to be the king over the children of Israel. Verse thirteen. Then Samuel took the horn of oil and anointed him in the midst of his brethren. And the spirit of the Lord Yahweh came upon David from the day, from that day forward. So Samuel rose up and went to Ramah. All right. So that's the point. The heavenly father chose who? King David. All right. Even though he was a young man. All right. And compared to these brothers was least of stature. All right. But as it tells you in the book of Sirach, he was... For him to um, watch over his kind, you know, over the sheep, he basically was fighting with lions. He was he he went to warrior school basically through the, the Yahweh Bar Shem El Shai Bar Shem Kadash, but unbeknownst to his family. All right, so let's end with this to bring it all home. This is the book of Zechariah twelve and eight. In that day shall the Lord Yahweh defend the inhabitants of the inhabitants of Yerushalayim. All right, and mind you, bring to mind what I read in the opening of this this video, Psalms the eighth chapter. All right, about the the sucklings and babes being brought to you know defend to to uh, bring down the Avengers. And um, I forget the other word it said for vain, but the, you know, those that go against the Heavenly Father. So I'll read this again, Zechariah 12 and 8. In that day shall the Lord Yahweh defend the inhabitants of Yerushalayim, and he that is feeble among them at that day shall be as David. And who's feeble among us? All of us, man. All right? Mind you, let's recall to mind in the book of Jeremiah, the ninth chapter, it tells you that let not the, the strong man glory in his strength, the wise man glory in his wisdom, the rich man grow, glory in his, his riches, I believe it goes, but let them glory in that they know the heavenly father. All right, that's our glory, okay? The heavenly father 
having his name right before us is our true glory. And he that's feeble among them, at that they shall be as David, right? So the feeble are going to be as David. Why? Because even remember the Lord, he said it very plainly. He said, he come, he said they that behold need not a physician. He came to bring the right, you know, not the righteous, but the sinners to repentance. All right, so the Heavenly Father sent Yahweh Shai before all right, the coming of his great day to basically uh, gather together those that are of, you know, feebleness in the eyes of the, in, in, in the eyes of the, those that are like, not regarded in the eyes of the world, the scribes, the wicked scribes and Pharisees. And the house of David shall be as the Most High, as be as God, and as the angel of the Lord Jehovah before them. So the Heavenly Father is going to deal with the house of David with great power. And Lord willing, you know, we'd be of that number. But he's going to magnify those brothers in that day. There may be brothers, you know, that they're, they're ill, you know, sick unto death, all different kind of ailments, right? Short hands, you know, short uh, misgivings. Not misgivings, man. You know, they have a lot of shortcomings in the eyes of the world, you know, physicality, mentally, maybe even like, you know, in terms of where they stand in the world. But the Heavenly Father is going to magnify them in that day for his glory, right? Them having his name before them, before the world. So with that, I pray you're edified to the next one. Say shalom, shalom.